Hi, and welcome to another at-home lesson from Grace in Motion. If this is your first time here, then I encourage you to take a few minutes to go to our website, gimsimple.net, and check out some of the introductory materials there. Otherwise, we're going to jump right into this lesson. We are continuing our series in the Gospel of John, and we are in John chapter 6. This, was in, this one is entitled, What is the Work of God? Specifically, we're going to be looking at verses 25 through 71. So I encourage you now to find an app, a program, a Bible, so that you can read through John 6, 25 through 71 as a group if you're with other people or on your own right now. So go ahead and pause the video and take time to read through this passage. All right, so hopefully you have finished that passage. It's a pretty big chunk of scripture this time. And now it's time to go ahead and discuss with your group or reflect on your own. What do you notice and wonder about this section of scripture? So what is what are the observations, the noticings that you make? And what are some of the questions that you have after reading this section of scripture? Go ahead and pause the video and discuss that now. Okay, and then another common question we use as we reflect on a passage of scripture is what do we learn about people from this passage? And what do we learn about Jesus? So go ahead and pause the video and discuss or reflect on that now. All right, what is the work of God? Let's hone in on some aspects of what we're looking at here. So in John 6, let's start with verses 28 and 29. It says, then they asked him, what must we do to do the works God requires. This is pretty much the standard, typical, common question of religion. What are the expectations of our religion? What are the duties of our religion? How do we work our way toward God? Is basically what this is asking. What is our task? It comes out of the Greek there for this idea of what is the work God requires of us? What is our job? This is a question of religion. Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. And with his response, we see yet again, he makes this paradigm shift from religion to relationship. The question is one of religion. The answer is one of relationship. He basically is he's saying that we trust that Jesus is revealing that God has already worked his way toward us huge fundamental foundational teaching um, throughout the New Testament, again here in John 6. So another way of reading this is the question could be, what is on the to-do list for serving God? And the answer that Jesus gives is, well, I need you to throw your list away and just trust that I love you. So let's um, think about that. How would you answer someone who asked you, what work must I do for God. So with your group, discuss that or on your own, reflect on how you would respond to that question. And do you think Jesus's answer to this question is sufficient or is it lacking something? Is there more that needs to be added to it? So go ahead and pause the video and discuss that now. Okay. So moving on, the next verse says, so they ask, asked is what that should say what miraculous sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you and at first you know i had a problem with this question uh, but it actually makes logical sense so they're saying basically if our whole job is to trust you jesus then how do we know you are worth trusting will you show us your power show us the proof that you're the one that we can depend on and count on if that's what the work of god really is So then um, what happens next is there's this discussion about Moses and manna from heaven and bread to eat. At least they had a sign back then of a miracle that they could point to. And then Jesus declared that I am the bread of life. If people come to Jesus is what he's saying, they will never hunger or thirst again. So another foundational teaching is here. And then we shift into understanding all of this in the context of the will of God. What is the will of God? And so in verse 37, 
Jesus says, all that the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. And then in the next verse, he reiterates that he is here to do God's will. And in the next verse, God's will is to lose nobody. And that gets us to verse 40 then. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life. It's all within the context of what is the work God requires of us? What is the will of God? So this is the will of God. We don't have to wonder anymore. Jesus is emphatic about the will of God. So we can know the will of God for people's lives right here. So I want you to take a moment to just pause and on your own, privately, independently, even if you're with a group, write down any thoughts, feelings, or questions you have about this teaching. I encourage you to set a timer for a couple of minutes and just write as much as you can in that time. So I'm going to show you the previous slide with those verses on it and go ahead and pause this video, set that timer and write as much as you can. Okay, so hopefully your time is up and you're ready to move on. So now let's discuss this with the people that you're with or reflect on it some more on your own. What does it mean that Jesus is the bread of life? What does that mean? And do you think this metaphor is difficult for people today? Um, and we're going to find that it was actually difficult for people back then. So go ahead and pause the video and discuss that now. All right, so let's examine this and you can actually come back to this discussion after hearing some of what I'm about to say. But going from verse 45 on through the next 15, 20 verses or so, it starts out with Jesus saying, everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to me. And then it returns to a discussion of the manna and bread that we talked about earlier. And again, Jesus reiterates, I am the bread of life. Now, the Jews thought that Jesus was teaching cannibalism because of his equation of bread with his flesh. And instead of clarifying that or making that worry go away, Jesus actually doubles down on his analogy. People must eat his flesh and drink his blood. And justifiably so, his followers have difficulty with this teaching. And so do I. I mean, that's that's a difficult thing to process. What does he really mean? What is he saying there? And so Jesus just, you know, backs all of this up and follows it up in verse 63 by saying the words I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life. And in verse 66, interesting verse, the teaching was so hard to swallow, pun completely intended there, for some disciples that they stopped following him at this point. And then, you know, he turns to some of the others and like, are you going to go somewhere else too, or are you not going to follow me anymore? And, and it ends in 68 and 69 with Simon Peter answering Jesus, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. So again, let's pause and just privately, independently, after rereading those verses, 66 through 69, on your own, reflect about where you are on a scale of one to five. One, I relate to those who walked away from Jesus. I get it. I relate to them. And five is I fully believe and trust Jesus as the Holy One of God. Where are you on that scale? Just on your own. You don't have to share it with anybody else. Where, where do you find yourself? And then let's go ahead and continue in this independent private moment to honestly share with God where you find yourself on that scale and why. So a little quiet time of prayer here. Pray on your own first, and then someone in the group that you're with can lead a closing prayer. And that's how we'll uh, wrap this up today. All right, so hopefully you have prayed and come to the conclusion here. And so we will end this the way we usually end. 
and that is to share something that someone else said or did that impacted you during this time. It's your way of blessing others who have blessed you during this time together. And as you leave from here today, remember, act with grace and simplify faith. Have a great day.